I'm pleased to welcome Nena Lal Kidwai, Chairman Max Financial Services. Ms. Kidwai, thanks very much for joining us this afternoon on NDTV Profit. I'm going to ask you to assess this budget uh, through the sort of financial sector lens, if you will. Um, let's start with the micro and then we'll take the big picture interview. Okay, well, uh, looking at the micros, I guess the stock markets tell us a lot. Uh, we did see a rally in the bond markets and currency markets, uh, which I think uh, was uh, uh, largely a reflection of the fact that the FISC was being contained at 3.5 and uh, that a whole bunch of increased taxes uh, that were expected, including uh, the long-term capital gains tax for equities, did not act. And so I think as the stock markets and the equity markets begin to digest this news, uh, it didn't look as bad as was expected. And that always helps in terms of the equity markets. So I think the capital markets have seen a certain buoyancy therein. Uh, 25,000 crores for banks uh, is clearly not enough in itself, but we have to see it in the context of 70,000 crores announced earlier and a clear understanding by this government <coughs> that the banks need uh, 1.8 lakh crore uh, to meet Basel III norms. But there is time, and uh, the finance minister did mention that they will stand solidly by the banks uh, as and when funds are needed. But in itself, uh, maybe for this year, uh, they may, there may be an issue. I think for me, really, the challenge is to really look at how this uh, budget is being balanced because uh, we have not had a chance to look at the nitty gritties yet. Uh, there is no disinvestment number there as a plug number. Uh, there's talk really more about uh, redesigning a process by which public sector companies can sell land and uh, do such things to increase uh, their funding and therefore maybe the dividends that go back to government. Mm -hmm. So there isn't a disinvestment number. Uh, there isn't uh, really uh, much in terms of increased taxation, fortunately, for uh, the private sector and fortunately for companies. But where is the money coming from, I think, is the big question mark. Uh, there is, uh, you know, amounts like the cess on diesel, etc., which point to, again, the government's commitment to clean environment uh, are there. Uh, maybe I saw some arithmetic which suggested maybe 14,000 crores. Uh, these are small amounts in the full context of a very large investment program, which is a right and good program in infrastructure uh, for the farm sector, for the rural economy. Uh, and these expenditure plans needs fu need funding from somewhere. Now, is this money due to come from uh, what looks like a very uh, interesting and noble exercise uh, to bring black money into the economy through the program announced for June 16. And if that is the case, that's great. Uh, we need to bring whatever money there is outside the tax system in the country into the taxable remit. Uh, so that could be one of the bonanzas which helps uh, in terms of achieving the fiscal target of 3.5. But until I see the numbers, I'm just a wee bit skeptical because there's all the good news there in okay. terms of spend. Uh, but uh, where the funding is actually going to come from uh, is a question mark. I know I believe service tax has gone up a bit and that can be a, a good collection because the service economy continues to do quite well. Uh, but uh, where else remains to be seen? Well, I'm going to take you off on a slightly different path, Nana, so bear with me. Do you think that with the government's commitment to stay on the you know, fiscal uh, deficit target uh, path uh, that it had set for itself, is the stage set for an well, out of turn rate cut by the RBI? Uh, it could be. I think, uh, you know, the fact that uh, the alignment is complete in terms, I mean, the RBI was clearly very, very focused on seeing a FISC uh, uh, being uh, maintained as committed earlier. And uh, to that extent now, you're, you're right in that the pressure comes back on banks to make sure that interest rates uh, come off. And I think if you look at some of the moves that happened, particularly in terms of uh, uh, what the RBI did over the last three or four months, the transmission of that interest rate from banks down into uh, the borrowers uh, should be easier under the new uh, regimes that RBI has put in. But uh, 
if you look at the quantum therein in the past, uh, there was a survey which Fiki indeed had done where 40% of the banks uh, only saw a transmission of about 20 to 25 basis points. And uh, another, you know, 20% actually saw more than 40 basis points. So the transmission has been quite low in the past. Right. And that is really what we need to see in terms of interest rates coming off. But if you look at interest rates on deposits, which actually have to move first, those have come off more sharply. So banks have begun to drop interest rates on deposits, and that's almost a precursor to interest rates on loans coming down. So maybe that transmission will be seen this year, and the benefit will therefore be available to the economy at large. Um, I'm also pleased to welcome back Sunil Kant Manjal, uh, Chairman of Hero Corporate Service. We had a chance to talk to him just before the budget speech of the Finance Minister started. Mr. Manjal, I'll be with you in a moment. I just want to, Nena, just uh, touch upon, uh, you know, the. we're asking everyone from the banking space this question, and I'm sure you're going to answer this question many times over today. But the fact that he's chosen to stick with that 25,000 crore number for you know PSU Bank recap, is that a source of worry at all? Uh, it's a worry if that's the only number. But, but I would like to see this as uh, it is a commitment that they will do at least that, and uh, a very strong commitment that they are solidly behind the banks and that they will do more if required. And uh, banks will have other ways to raise money too. Uh, we have to see whether those avenues can get exploited in the market which enables them to and uh, of course now with the new banking uh, uh, board bureau in place which is uh, not just apparently to look at nominations of uh, the bank staff and board members but also to guide hopefully on mergers and acquisitions and consolidation and broader brush uh, uh, relooks at what needs to be done may suggest that uh, they will, we will see an era where uh, public sector banks uh, and holdings therein don't have to be at uh, the levels they are. Because at the end of the day, we need to get these banks on their feet. We need to get uh, the pressure on the FISC to keep them up and running, uh, uh, taken away. And uh, most important, we need to see the restructuring side of their balance sheet sorted out which happens, unfortunately, outside of the budget, and it has to be through passage of a bankruptcy bill. Okay, what did you make of uh, the uh, intent to perhaps list for general insurance companies of the government? Nena? Yeah, so listing has two advantages. Listing brings a certain degree of transparency and governance uh, into the system. Uh, and the second is it brings capital into uh, these institutions. So, uh, uh, and uh, the third and most important is it brings capital to uh, the shareholders uh, if the, indeed the listing happens through some selling of stake uh, into the markets. So this could be an interesting uh, uh, exercise. Uh, it's not been called disinvestment, it's called listing, but it does and could bring money into government coffers because these are, uh, you know, big monopolies. Uh, they are uh, well known, well understood in the markets and I think could be quite good in terms of the funds they bring back into oh. the FISC and into uh, the government treasuries. Nena Lalkitve, thanks very much for joining us this afternoon.